In a previous set of video lectures, we talked about the law of sines, and we talked about using that to solve oblique triangles and application problems that involve oblique triangles. In this set of video lectures, we're going to talk about the law of cosines, and the objective for this video lecture is, given an oblique triangle, state the law of cosines. Now, you'll, if, if you'll recall from my Law of Signs video lectures that we actually proved it, or we derived the formula. Um, that formula is rather simple to derive. The Law of Cosines formula is a fair piece more complicated to prove or to derive, and I, will, I won't be doing that here. I'll just be stating it. But we'll certainly uh, suggest that if you're interested to do a quick web search on the law of cosines proof or just the law of cosines in general and you can see that there are probably two or three different ways that you can uh, derive the law of cosines formula. So I'll leave that for you as interested. Coming into this, we know, uh, we'll, we know <laughs> for this lesson we know one thing that's going to matter, what's an oblique triangle? Uh, an oblique triangle is a triangle that does not have a right angle. Okay, as we're reminding ourselves and we're solving oblique triangles, what that means is finding the other three parts when given three parts, at least one of which is a side, there are four possible combinations of the three parts given. Case one was when we had two angles and one side, abbreviated angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, and we saw that we could use the law of sines to solve case one. Case two is when we had two sides and the angle opposite one, to, one of those, excuse me, uh, abbreviated side, side, angle, and this one was the most complicated of the four because we might have well, we, first off, we use the law of sines to solve it, but it was the most complicated because we might not be able to make a triangle. We might be able to only make one triangle, and we may have the ambiguous case in which we could make two triangles. So that's the one that tends to catch up most, uh, most students or most people. Case three and case four, we're going to be using the law of cosines to solve because they don't have a ratio pair in them. Case three two sides and the included angle, abbreviated side angle side or SAS, and case four, three sides, abbreviated side 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 SSS. Okay, again, you'll note in these two cases, you cannot set up a proportion to solve because you do not have a known ratio to work with. Okay, so we're just gonna state the law of cosines here. Uh, again, it can be used to solve these two cases. Let's take our triangle. I'm going to label it uh, the angles with capital letters A, B, and C. Uh, the sides opposite the angles, I'll use the lowercase letters. So the side opposite angle A is lowercase a. Here's lowercase b, and here's lowercase c. Okay, so an oblique triangle. Here's the law of cosines in words. The square of one side of the triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus twice the product of the other two sides and the cosine of the angle between them. Whew! That would be a mouthful. <laughs> but that's how it looks in words. I'm going to I'm going to write it out all three possibilities and you'll see and then I'll go you'll see what, I'll go over the words and you'll see how it all comes to play. So the square of the side, the square of one side of a triangle is equal to, okay, here's one side of a triangle, the square of one side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Well, the other two sides in this case are B and C, so let's add the squares. There's the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus twice the product of the other two sides. Well, the other two sides, again, are B and C, and the cosine 
of the angle between them, well, the angle between B and C is angle A. So there you have it. The square of one side of the triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus twice the product of the other two sides and the cosine of the angle that is between those two sides, which is angle A. Notice how these two things line up. If, you're, if, you're, if you have the side on this side, the angle corresponds to that side over here. And we can do the same thing for side B and side C and give you the law of cosines in full. So B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of B. And finally, C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. So that's the law of cosines, okay? It uses one angle and three sides, okay, uh, to solve. So if you know three of these parts, you can find the fourth part. If you know this side, you obviously, you know, if you know this side, this side, and this side, well, you can find the angle. If you know this side, uh, well, and, and this side and the angle, you can find this side, et cetera, et cetera. Using this formula would probably be the better idea. But that's the law of cosines. Uh, coming up now, let's put it to work uh, in solving some triangles and looking at some application problems.